Hi, you guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing, and today I want to talk to you about the spending habits of millennials. There are certain generalities that can be applied to every generation. These generalities include what that generation's interested in, their worldview, their habits, and it's perfectly natural and understandable for different generations to have different approaches to these things, right? So when it comes to our spending habits, it's pretty important to analyze whether they're helping us reach our financial goals or they're getting in our own way. So today what I wanna do is take a look at some of the spending habits that are typically associated with millennials and determine whether they're helpful or harmful. So millennials, it seems like more than any other generation before them, tend to value experiences over possessions, and they would rather spend their money on trips to Europe or a concert with friends than a nice car or even living away from their parents. So this isn't necessarily bad spending habits, as research suggests that, you know, people who spend their money on experiences rather than products overall have a higher quality of life. I think that's a pretty cool thing. However, it can be a problem. If the millennials are choosing to value their experiences over the possession of investments and assets, and they're spending what they're making without looking forward to the future at all. This can be a really, really big, big problem. And millennials are also known for splurging on a few little items like convenience, things that were often um, not something that was used by prior generations. On the whole, millennials eat out more often, they pay for transportation more often, they purchase convenience items more often than the generations before them. And here's the thing, the expenses can add up quickly and they should certainly be inspected. If you're looking for ways to cut back, save money, and ultimately go for the ultimate financial freedom. So one good thing about spending habits of millennials is that they're a lot less likely to splurge on big old large ticket items like a sports car or a boat, that's good. But other than the student debt that many millennials gotta contend with, millennials are, turns out, are very hesitant to go into debt to purchase unneeded items like that. It's awesome. So this approach gives millennials a big edge when it comes to savings and retirement planning because debt can be a huge detriment to your financial goals. So unfortunately, of course, a lot of millennials have debt in the form of the student debt. But if you can get rid of that, then you're on your way to a really good strategy and a really good discipline to saving money. When it comes to investing, here's the problem though. Many millennials have a real fear of the stock market. Remember, they were pretty young and impressionable during the Great Recession, where they watched the stock market completely crash and watched their parents fear for their financial future. And they've now been shackled with the consequences of the recession, has had on our economy, which means an economy that's just staggering along, barely functioning, with people being massively employed in really weak jobs. And this has caused a lot of millennials to associate the stock market with doom and gloom rather than opportunity. And millennials are much less likely to spend their money on investments than previous generations. So while a healthy dose of pessimism is really good to succeed as an investor, too much pessimism, cynicism, can cause fear and will make you avoid the market altogether. And this is a huge mistake, since in my view, there's no other opportunity outside the stock market, outside of buying wonderful businesses that will allow you to grow your wealth as certainly and as effectively. Millennials who are trying to be as financially wise as possible, like anybody else, have to focus on the importance of thinking the long term, right? Got to look out into the future. You got to analyze how your spending habits are going to affect your financial situation in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years from now and adjust those habits as necessary. And I'll tell you, since I have daughters who are millennials, that getting them to think about this, getting them to think about financial freedom, which means the ability to do what you love in your life, the ability to experience life at the utmost in the things you're passionate about without the fear of having to make a great living for the rest of your life so you can retire someday when you then start living like the generations before you. And when you adjust your spending habits that way, let me tell you something, you guys are in positions because of kind of the way you're managing your money 
that you could reach financial freedom better than any generation before you. Most importantly, while you're using your spending money on experiences rather than products that's totally valid, maybe even wise, you gotta be sure you're putting a little bit, just a small portion of your income out here for an investment in financial freedom. There's no better time to start going for financial freedom than right now if you're a millennial, because any investment calculator that you look at will show you that even a few years of head start with investing at a great rate of return will make an incredible difference of how much money you have, how soon you can be at that level of financial freedom. While millennials have been burdened with some of the challenges, both in circumstances they've been dealt with the market going down and the whole economy staggering along and the attitudes and spending habits that those circumstances have created, okay, I get that, but with the right approach, you can still have an incredible opportunity to meet and exceed your financial goals. And even if you don't have any, let me just give you this one. Become financially free. Be able to live the life you want. That should be a goal that every millennial should strive for. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your financial goals? Is financial freedom something you're thinking about in the long term? Or are you just thinking day to day? Leave me a comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. Now, thanks for watching, you guys. Now go play. If you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about what's possible for investing habits toward financial freedom, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. Thanks again for watching.